afternoon, Ron Graham here, Senior Benefits Consultant, First Financial Services. Coming to you today, guys, with one that I really, really hope leaves a good imprint in your minds today. You know we are right here in the transportation, for the transportation, by the transportation, a channel that absolutely brings you the information the way it needs to be brought. And I hope today we can really, really get some things out there for you guys that I hope and pray will be an absolute game changer in your toolkit of the many things needed for survival. Once again, Ron Graham coming to you with another one. Stay with me. Here we go. to touch on the high income trap. Yes, I call it the high income trap. And I'll go with that why for many of you that are new to the transportation industry, strap on your seatbelts, you've chosen an absolute game changer of a career. Uh, I can recall, you know, remembering in the early years, you know, uh, a, a wise man once said, Ron G, just answer your phone and the rest will take care of itself. And it did, right? And so what happens is that we have to, though, sometimes realize that in this industry, we're on what we call this hamster wheel. Because remember now, guys, we're in an industry that's 24 hours, seven days a week. It never changes. It never stops. Um, so in that regard, uh, some of the things that we really want to wake up to and be aware of is what's going on with our money. A lot of you guys are still very relatively young uh, on this uh, channel, but what I do want to do is bring to light those of you who are still in the striking distance where you have to start making adjustments as far as what your retirement may or may not look like. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if there are some tweaks and some changes these, this is probably the timeline that you want to start making those adjustments. So what exactly are we talking about when we talk about the high income trap? Well, like most of us know, there are things that we've seen uh, that we know we have to be aware of. We've had to have seen these things. So I want to talk about the top three things that we absolutely must know to avoid the trap. And before I get into this, I just want to bring to light that we know that we see certain levels of income coming in every couple of weeks or every month, and we understand a lot's going out, right? And we probably have put in a lot of uh, uh, trust in some of the vehicles that we've used, that we utilize, which we know uh, in, in the case of transportation, and I'm not sure of all transportation companies, but we have some that have specialized retirements like retirement and other forms of pensions. So, which brings me to the next slide, social security or railroad retirement. And so how should we really wrap our minds around these vehicles? Like what's the right way to look at this so that we don't avoid certain pitfalls and certain traps? Well, yeah, you're right. Most likely these vehicles will not be enough. And the reason why I want to say that is because for those of you who are in the high income earning group, you already know what your monthly income looks like. You know that for most of us, we're not turning down overtime. Uh, we're taking on extra jobs and doing extra things because a lot of this is in our mindsets to get as much as we can while we can, while we're still up to getting it. So you have to think about that. And you have to write your numbers down so that they really make sense, even after you look at this video maybe a second or third time. Why? Because whatever that number is, so let's say for an example, you're looking at you're doing about 10K a month, you know, in, 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 in earnings. Well, maybe you're doing, all right, let's be a little less conservative. Let's say 7K a month in earnings, because that could depend on what part of the country you're in. But let's be realistic. Those calculations for retirement are going to be based on percentages. And I want you guys to not fall into 
a concept of trap thinking that, you know, I made 7,000 or 8,000 a month, or I was grossing 10,000 a month or whatever, and that that's going to be going on there. Again, we also have to look at people, <clears throat> as you all are well aware of the tier one, tier two thingy, but you also have to look at people, you know, who may not do 30 years of railroad service. You have people like myself that didn't do 30 years, right? That came out early. So what about me, right? What, what happens to someone like myself, right? Or someone that whatever couldn't do it, you know, for whatever reason, for personal reasons or whatever. So you have to take in all of these considerations when you start trying to think about, well, what number am I looking at? But the main thing I want you to pay attention to is the bullet number two. These calculations are going to be based on percentages. And that is why I'm waking up you uh, to that idea, because if you understand that, then you won't put as much stock in these retirement tools, thinking that they're going to be able to take care of your needs in the future. And again, what do we talk about here? The numbers that don't lie, right? So what does that mean? So let's say the average high income earner uh, uh, in this position that's making, you know, anywhere between 50,000 to 100,000 on an annual basis, because the median that they use in the social security, uh, uh, what they call it, the social security training video for social security, they use 50,000. So I kind of started at 50 and went up to like 100,000. And so on average, those people are making anywhere between 3,000 to $4,500 a month in their retirement. Now, what I notice about Social Security, they actually really benefit more people that didn't make as much money because from what I understood, uh, the first uh, portion of the Social Security um, that they do, if I'm correct, you get 90% of the first $960 that you made. And then you get 32% of the remaining uh, what is that? 5,785 between 960 and 5,785, you get 32% of that. Uh, it takes, like I said, the 35 top best years. Uh, and it looks at those earnings. And uh, we know that even in the railroad industry, it's similar to that. It, the tier one does the top 35 years. And then, of course, that tier two looks at your top five years. But again, guys, it's going to be percentages. So when you think about that, and let's look at a top uh, railroad person of, of any cross the board or, you know, bus transportation, you're looking at maybe $4,500 uh, on a monthly basis. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's great. Uh, yeah, I guess. But if you think about the taxes and you think about the inflation and you think about that right now, as we speak, many of you watching the video are probably pulling in well more than 4,500 a month. Now you can understand why the need to bring awareness to this is very, very important. Again, how do these numbers stack up? You got to realize, what are the expenses? Are we looking at working uh, well past, uh, you know, 65 uh, many of you guys that I know are very, very young, which means that for the most part, if you're under the normal traditional uh, book of business here in retirement, you have to work until you're 67 to get what they call full benefits. So we got to remember now in the modern era, you know, 67 is the new 55, you know, because of, you know, medical health and, and better health technology and things of that nature that has done wonders uh, here in the United States of America. Um, so for the most part, these are things that we have to be aware of. The third one, are your retirement tax protected? So my question is, do these vehicles clear you from taxes? Do you have tools in place? I know a lot of people uh, have the good old 401k and things like that in place um, to offset um, you know, the fact that maybe their railroad retirement or whatever retirement vehicle they have may not be enough. But again, as high income earners, we have to be very careful to understand that we are still always going to be in the striking distance of taxes. 
right? So that question lines, what type of retirement vehicles are we using? Because there are vehicles that get taxed and there are retirement vehicles that do not get taxed. That's something that we have to know. And if we're not sure, it's time to find out what vehicles are out there that are tax preventative and tax protected. So you have to start to know that, right? And a lot of times this is something that we kind of push down the road, kick the can down the road, but I'm absolutely saying today for the sake of this video, we have to now start to look at places that we may or may not have looked in the past. Again, knowing which ones are the best solutions to protect against taxes. So yeah, Uncle Johnny, or best friend Joe, or whatever, telling you about different things that's out there, you know, all types of products that's out there. Don't get me wrong, you know, always have an open ear and listen. But some of the things that you, meaning you, you high income earners that I'm speaking to, have to be very aware of is always ask the question how does the taxes look? How does the taxes look? How are they protected? Why? Because again and again and again, these are the things that will absolutely come back down the road when we least can afford it to and buy. But last but not least, taxes are today a thorn in the side of our high income earners because you all know you look at the checks. Some of us have more money coming out in taxes that can absolutely pay someone else's salary. We've seen it. We've done it. We know what it looks like. Painful as it is, that's the reality. Those taxes are here today. And if you're not careful, they're going to be with you tomorrow as well. Last but not least, let us not get caught out there by surprise with the healthcare concepts that we need to understand moving forward. As of the sound of my voice, today is 2023. A lot of us have come through the, the horrors of COVID and many other things. And as most of us know, we're still here, we're still standing. And for the most part, we are still strong. So we know that we still have to be aware of healthcare because of the longer life expectancy. So you say, well, living longer, that's a great thing. It is. But at the same time, we still have to be aware of some other things as well. Like what? The lack of proper health coverage. What does that mean? Well, a lot of us don't really look at the health sector as much as we should. Now, some of us are fully aware of some of the nuances that health issues can cause. We've been uh, in certain situations where we may have been injured or hurt or how to work for so long periods of time. So a lot of uh, brothers and sisters on this call are aware of that and they know some of the pitfalls that that happens. I mean, that can happen from that, but at the same time, are we properly protected? Because in your retirement years, there are certain things that you're gonna have to be aware of and that are your out-of-pocket medical costs. Why? Well, today we got out-of-pocket medical costs. Guess what? No big deal. Go work another shift. Go do another job. Go work an extra thing and go ahead and handle our business and get that doggone thing paid off. The difference is, is that in your retirement years, the chances of you being able to do that become very, very low because, of course, you probably are not still working and doing the things that you're doing at the moment that we're speaking now. So you have to consider that. You also don't want to get caught up in the misunderstanding of Medicare. A lot of people say, oh, well, I'll just go get on Medicare and Medicare will take care of all my problems. I've seen all these beautiful commercials on TV. They got all of these benefits. But the thing we have to understand is that in Medicare, you have to realize that there are still out-of-pocket expenses that do not go away. And you must understand what they are before anything happens. Why? Because there are certain plans that you can get that will almost diminish those out-of-pocket exp uh, expenses. But again, you got to be aware of them and you got to know that I need these things to offset that. Those three things that we talked about, your taxes, we talked about uh, your retirement vehicles and the percentages of monies that you're gonna get versus what you're making now. Those are big things. We also have to talk about health because a lot of those things, when it comes down to people 
in this country that are struggling mightily is due to financial burdens, due to health issues and concerns, the unexpected. Uh, the tax bracket absolutely comes back and bites them. They didn't have the proper retirement tools that helped them avoid those major taxes. And again, they didn't account for the inflation, the cost of living, the little things like that that right now goes without saying can be major catastrophic events in our future. Guys, I hope this helped. Girls, I hope this helped. I'm your guy, Ron Graham, coming to you with another one. Let's stay healthy. Let's stay well. Peace.